Traumatic brain injury or concussion may occur in a variety of situations, from simple daily accidents to head injuries suffered in automobile collisions, to trauma experienced by military personnel caused by battlefield explosions, even severe head impact suffered by participants in sporting events at the amateur as well as elite athletic levels. I think after 20 years, God only knows the toll. This was a little shocking to me to, that I couldn't remember if I had started playing youth soccer. It was just one summer, I think. Traumatic brain injury, or TBI, can often lead to chronic issues with memory, unexplained anger, antisocial behavior, along with disturbed sleep patterns. Previously, prescription drugs along with behavioral therapy provided limited and unpredictable results for those living with TBI. These therapies have been the only course of treatment for TBI up until recently. Currently, injured areas of the brain can be localized with SPECT scans and qualified for severity. Sarah Scan, a specialized imaging technology developer, documents changes by comparing a combination of before, after, and normative images. The resulting images document regions of low blood flow. On these images, the gray areas represent good to normal blood flow, while the green and blue colored areas are not receiving good levels of blood flow. Near-infrared light therapy is FDA cleared for increasing circulation. Near-infrared light penetrates the bony skull and can reach areas deep in the brain that are underperfused. Research conducted by Dr. Michael Hamblin, Principal Investigator at the Wellman Center for Photomedicine at Mass General Hospital and Associate Professor at Harvard Medical School suggests, the fact that near-infrared light can penetrate into the brain would allow non-invasive treatment to be carried out with a low likelihood of adverse treatment-related side effects. Furthermore, low-level light therapy may have beneficial effects in the acute treatment of brain damage injury by increasing respiration in the mitochondria, causing activation of transcription factors, reducing key inflammatory mediators, and inhibiting apoptosis. Near-infrared light is well studied and is known to cause the release of nitric oxide from red blood cell hemoglobin and thus is a powerful vasodilator. And in 1998, the Nobel Prize was awarded to three U.S. scientists for, collectively for their discovery of nitric oxide. So now we know it's the main molecule produced by the cells that line every centimeter and inch of blood vessels. Uh, it maintains normal blood pressure. Uh, it's a molecule produced by our white blood cells that helps fight off invading bacteria and viruses and even kills off rapidly dividing cancer cells. And it's a neurotransmitter in the central nervous system. So it's basically involved in every biological system within the body. The application of near-infrared light directly to the skull of a TBI subject will increase blood flow, but nitric oxide also causes angiogenesis, which is the growth of new blood vessels at the injured brain area site. Angiogenesis is a process that occurs naturally. When you have a wound, you heal that wound, it requires new blood vessels to grow into that area to supply the new tissue with blood. I've been impressed by looking at the Sarascan imaging technology that Sarascan has provided, which shows, I think, the chronic nature of sustained injuries within the brain uh, six months, a year, five years after that injury had occurred. The beauty of what these first two warfighters and the treatments that we've instituted in them with near-infrared light therapy has shown is that even though the injury happened, happened several years ago, Within 12 weeks, major, major changes in blood flow within the brain are documentable. And associated with this are improved sleeping habits, uh, better memory, less social uh, disruption. Um, there are a lot of positive things that I can't believe haven't been the result of better blood flow. Sarascan images have shown a restoration of blood flow in the brain to near normal levels following 18 to 24 treatments over a 6 to 12 week period using near infrared light exclusively. This protocol has proven sufficient to restore blood flow to near normal levels in an injured brain regardless of the time elapsed between injury and treatment. This increase is generally accompanied by a reversal of the TBI symptoms. With a positive increase in blood flow, physician drug recommendations may actually become more effective as increased blood flow can help deliver drugs to damaged areas of the brain more efficiently. 
In addition, use of light therapy, which increases blood flow, may enhance the effects of hyperbaric oxygen therapy to improve oxygenation of damaged tissues.